We're back in Las Vegas at the Aria for Falcon 22, CrowdStrike's big user conference. I'm Dave Vellante, and you're watching theCUBE. Sven Krasser is here. He's the Senior Vice President and Chief Scientist at CrowdStrike, and we're going to get a master class in AI for security. Sven, thanks for coming on, appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. So I love the title, uh, I just I'm excited to have you on. I understand you were like employee number two, or you know, really early on. A among well, the initial nine, yeah. 11 years ago, and I think two days, you started. Yes. What was that like? You know, was that, did you know George beforehand, or you kind of? Yeah, I, I, knew, I knew George before, like not as well as I know him now, yeah. um, and uh, it, it sounded like a, a pretty good proposition about what he was uh, having in mind. Um, like things security-wise didn't really work that well back in the day, and uh, we wanted to try something new, like cloud-native, data-driven, AI, and use that to stop, uh, to stop breaches, so yeah, like, it, it was very exciting, like you go there, you have nothing there, first day you open your laptop and you try to reinvent security. Yeah, so I mean, I, I know he never, he talks about this, I never said it, it, we're going to be an AV company, but of course, you know, you start with antivirus and when you're at an endpoint and known malware, okay, but unknown malware at the time wasn't really being addressed. And if I understand it, you guys brought in machine intelligence from the start. That's, that. that, that's, that's right, and the, like the way we, we looked at it is, like back then we said you don't have a malware problem, you have an adversary problem. Just like recognizing that it's not malware, but there's people behind it that act on objectives that you need to, that you need to counter and you don't want to run after them, you want to be ahead of them. Like that was, that was the approach like at a very high level that we were taking. And you know, now we have it a little bit more summed up and we say we stop breaches. So like that's, that's the end result. So how do you specifically leverage AI? Which parts of the portfolio? Is it across the portfolio? And you know, where did it start? How did it evolve? Um, yeah, we're very, we're very data driven. So we're working hard to use the, the proper tools to work with data wherever we can. And AI being one of these, these tools that uh, we like to bring to bear. Um, the, the, cloud, the CrowdStrike Security Cloud, at the moment we're doing about uh, roughly two trillion events with a T per day. Like that, that volume of data like going through our platform, that, that's not something that you, can, that you can work with manually, right? So we need, we need to bring the heavy machinery, like that's, that's how we're bringing AI to bear. Two trillion events per day, I mean, there aren't a lot of organizations that see that many events a day. I mean, maybe, maybe some of the hyperscalers, um, possibly. I, I don't know. Uh, that's a yeah. I think I think it really allows us to get unprecedented insights into what's actually going on out there in the in, in the landscape. And you know, it's it's like it's like with a camera or a telescope. The bigger your aperture the fainter signals you can detect and that's why like that's why the volume is is critical and that's why we that's why we from the get go set out to build a cloud native platform so that we can actually aggregate this type of data and analyze it in one spot basically where where everything comes together that we can draw these connections will we ever see security without humans I don't. I don't think so. Um, I, this 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 notion that machine intelligence is so intelligent that it just takes these jobs over. Um, to me, it's more like a tool, right? Like these these algorithms, they do need to learn from something. They need to learn from human expertise. The way at CrowdStrike we have things set up is um, like our our human teams, our threat hunters, our um, MDR staff. Um, our incident responders, like whatever they do, we, we're taking these insights and we're feeding them into the AI algorithms. So if there's, if there's uh, a new type of attack and we have an incident response team on the ground and they find something, that gets leveraged, put into a database, and our AI can learn from that. I, I, I really like that in the keynote, uh, Kevin Mandia actually talked to that, you know, like get the incident responders out there, get their knowledge, bake it into products, and that, that's, that's the approach that we're taking with, with, with our AI. So, uh, my, in my head I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what do humans do better than machines? I mean, humans are creative, right? Machines really aren't creative, right? I mean, um, and, and adversaries are very creative. So, so w w I guess flip side question, what, is, what does AI do, what does the machine intelligence do that, that humans 
can't do? Is it scale? Is it just massive volumes? Help us understand what humans do well and machines do well and how they complement each other. Yeah, so AI is, is very good at working with extremely large amounts of data. Again, like cloud native platform, like that's where you get this AI advantage. It can work with data that is a lot more complex, like more facets of data. So we talked about XDR here at Falcon a lot, right? Like you get data from all these different products, from all these different angles. Like the more different facets you add to that, like it becomes overwhelming for the human mind. It's just like so much complexity that a human can put together in their brain. With AI, you don't have these limitations. It's just math. It's just like multiplying big matrices, and um, you can work with a lot larger data sets, like those two trillion events that we do per day on the on the CrowdStrike Security Cloud, but also data that is a lot more complex, that has more facets, looks at the problem from different angles. That's where AI is especially useful. I want to ask you, I it's a topic I haven't asked anybody uh, this week, and I've, I've been meaning to, is, you know, there's this concept of, of living off the land, right? Using your own tools against you. Mm -hmm. um, how are you able to detect that? Is that because of lateral movement? Or, I mean, I'm sure there are many, many factors, but, but how are you addressing that problem, that kind of stealthy using your tools against you? Yeah, so adversaries, this is again, there's motivated humans behind that. They figured if they drop a malware file on the machine, that's an artifact, an indicator of compromise, right? And that can be detected. So they're avoiding dropping files on disk that could be detected or to bring their to bring their own tools. They try to work with the tools that they find on the machines. They need to act on objective though. There's something they want to accomplish. Like they're not, they're not logging in just to, you know, like uh, do nothing. And this is where indicators of attack come in, right? Like we know what their objectives are and we're trying to capture this. We're describing this in an abstract way. What is it that they try to accomplish? That's what indicators of attack describe. And when they act on these objectives, then we can catch them. So, I, I think that the, t the term indicators of attack, I, I, you may have coined it, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was you had an announcement at, at Black Hat. Those indicators are not static, right? <laughs> to your point, the, the humans on the other end are motivated. Are you a, can, can AI help predict future indicators of attack, maybe working with, with humans? Yeah, this is, this is something that we um, recently rolled out where we're connecting our AI intelligence to our indicator of attack framework where basically um, the AI crunches the big data and then the indicators, the, the knowledge that the AI generates, understanding the context of the situation, can feed into the indicators of attack that we're evaluating to see if an adversary is acting on a specific objective. And then if an IOA triggers, that can feed back into the AI, and the AI can use that information to um, derive a more precise results. So we have a good feedback loop between these two, these two systems, and they're more tightly integrated now. As, a, as an AI expert, I want to ask you, is, is the intelligence, is AI actually artificial, or is it, is it real? <laughs> well, it, it, it is artificial because I guess we, we build it, right? Like it's uh, human made. I, I think uh, a lot of people get hung up on the term intelligent. And it, it's not really intelligent in the, say, in the sense that it acts on agency with, with agency. Like you would look at a problem, right? It's good at solving specific types of tasks and problems that we can define in ways that these algorithms work on it, but it is not the same level of creative thinking that a human brings to the problem. And this is, going back to the beginning of the conversation, this is why we like to have humans involved in the teaching of the AI. The AI can act autonomously in real time, stopping threats, but there's humans that take a look at what is going on to give the AI input and feedback and, um, and improvements because we are up against other humans, right? You don't want to have a human kind of uh, press the buttons of the AI until they found a way around it. But that's called adversarial machine learning, a very real threat as well. Like we're, we're looking at the problem as humans against humans. Like what, what tools do we need to bring to the battle to keep the adversaries out of our customers' networks? Okay, so my follow-up is, but there are systems of agency. Fraud detection is, a, is an example, but your, I think your point is that that never would have been possible without humans. 
Is that right or? It, yeah, like on, on the one hand, these systems get trained with human knowledge. On the other hand, there, there are humans that take a look at if the systems give the right responses. Like uh, there, there isn't, like if you talk to your smart speaker, like, like for, for me, like I'm, I'm asking my smart speaker to turn a specific light on in my living room and it, it half the time doesn't work, right? right. Like that, that wouldn't happen with a human. There's, there's like a lot more context and understanding and um, like, humans are more robust. Like it's, it's harder to fool a human. The limitation that we humans have is complexity, complexity and volume. So we're trying to make like a peanut butter and cookie approach, a peanut butter and chocolate approach rather, where we want to use the human creativity alongside the AI which can handle scale, complexity, and volume at unprecedented, uh, unprecedented scales. And when you bring it out to the edge, uh, we, we were just talking to uh, 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 Stefan Goldberg about <laughs> IoT and extended IoT. When you think about you know, AI, a lot, of, a lot of AI today is modeling that's done in the cloud and then applied, but when you go out to the edge, you, you're starting to see more AI inferencing in near real time or even real time. Will that change the equation? What's the future of, of, of AI and cyber look like? Um, I, think, I, I think it will be pervasively applied. So we're using it already on the edge, on our sensors, but also in the cloud, right? Um, on the sensor, we want to be able to act very quickly. On the endpoint, we want to be able to act very quickly without any delay with local information or if the system is offline for a period of time, right? So we have AI models running there. In the cloud, we have the advantage of being able to work with vast amounts of data without slowing down our customers' machines. So like models will be applied everywhere where there's data. Like that's kind of the name of the game. Like let's bring let's bring this this type of artificial intelligence, this type of of like uh, refined digested expertise wherever the data sits, on the endpoint, in the cloud, where you have it. And CrowdStrike doesn't care, right? I mean, it's just... I mean, we, we care about stopping yeah, the Yeah, but you're agnostic there. to the physical location of... That, that's correct. ...that activity. So, uh, last question is, how should we as humans prepare for the future of AI in, in cyber? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I, uh, I would say like stay stay creative and like figure out how we can get that knowledge that you have like formalized into into databases right AI the way I look at it is an amplifier of human expertise. You do something at a small scale as a human, the AI system can do it at a big scale right like it's kind of like digging with a spoon whether it's digging with an excavator with a with a backhoe so um I, I'd say stay, stay creative and see how we can take things that we do as humans in the small scale and let's do it in the cloud uh, like with, with large data volumes. Great advice, good creativity I think is, is a key. Sven, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Okay, keep it right there. Listen, by, by the way, I meant to, to tell our audience a lot of resources at siliconangle.com, uh, thecube.net, wikibon.com has a ton of research, all available. Uh, at, for no charge, no, no, no password needed, just access that, check it out. We're live from the Aria Hotel in Las Vegas, Falcon 22, Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll be back after this short break. Mm -hmm.